next gen Ryzen chips, new AMD GPU, and bad news for the RTX 4090. Let's talk about it. Before we get into the video, guys, I gotta talk to you about FlexiSpot and their new E7 standing desk. I've been using this unironically to film all of my reviews on when it comes to displays. I mean, it's got everything you need. It goes up, it goes down. You can set your own profiles. It has a standing profile. It's got a sitting profile. And guys, this has been really great for me because I don't always wanna move my camera up and down or adjust it. It's way easier for me to do this. And it actually looks looks pretty great. I mean, it carries my weight. It's going to be able to carry any monitor that I put on it. I even put on the 57 inch Neo G9 and that thing is a heavy boy. It just allows me to get great shots of the product because I have a nice neutral white the contrast against that neutral gray, allowing the monitors to stick out, which is why I've chosen to use a FlexiSpot desk to do all of my reviews. So if you're interested in this, guys, I will have a link in the description below. Highly suggest going ahead and taking a look. It does help out the channel as well. But in any case, thank you to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video with their fantastic standing desk. Okay, so starting off with those new Ryzen 8000 series chips, well, if you haven't been paying attention to any of the leaks, well, these new processors are set to be a pretty substantial performance increase over the current Ryzen 7000 series chips, and I do believe that the X3D variants are going to be even more impressive, as it seems like a lot of these performance improvements are actually going to be coming from the IPC, which means at the same clock speed as Ryzen 7000, Ryzen 8000 should be significantly faster, and since clock speed is an issue for X3D, I think you get the point they should be a pretty substantial leap. However, guys, it looks like there's some more information coming from the website Hardware Times where apparently there's some somewhat concerning news about the temperatures that these new CPUs could be reaching. Now, this information actually came out during what appears to be some sort of an interview with David McAfee, the AMD corporate VP and GM for client business, where he essentially stated, as you can see on screen now, and pause if you need to, that yeah, it's likely that the temperatures of CPUs are actually going to be going up despite the fact that the 95C temperatures on the current Ryzen 7000 series chips were cause for concern. And that to me, guys, is a little bit concerning because I do think that if we run these processors really, really hot, it could be potentially harming the lifespan of these CPUs well, in the long run. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Do you think that running CPUs at 100 degrees Celsius basically all the time will lead to a lower lifespan, or do you think that at the appropriate voltages and amperage, it should be fine? Curious to know your thoughts in the comments below. But now let's go ahead and talk about the next story, and that's that, yes, AMD does have a new GPU that's starting to become widely available and is a very exciting GPU taken at face value. Now, this graphics card in question is actually being called the 7900 GRE. This was released a little while ago. However, it was not available, at least as far as I'm aware, anywhere outside of China. Well, now that's starting to change. And as we can see, according to this article that comes from videocards.com, it's actually coming in at a fairly reasonable price when compared to the 7900 XT, which should be a little bit faster. That's 835 euros, of course, over in Europe. And then this one's coming in at 672. And then the step down, the 7800 XT is coming in at 544 euros. Now, this is a very strange card here, guys, because when you look at the price point, I think, and the name, everything makes sense. Well, the name a little bit, but what doesn't make sense is that it has the same 16 gigabytes of VRAM as the 7800 XT. So it does raise the question of how much faster will it really be? I know that Hardware Unbox did do some numbers on this thing, and I think that the power limit is severely holding this thing back. So depending on what model you get, it could be that this thing is a really great value GPU buy, but if you get a reference design or a lower power limit model, which who knows, maybe all of them are severely power limited, then maybe it's not worth the extra money to jump from a 7800 XT to a 7900 GRE, and you're better off going for a 7900 XT or XTX. But again, that's just my thoughts. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below on whether or not you think the 7900 GRE is actually worth it. But now we got to talk about the RTX 4090 because if you've been wanting to get an RTX 4090 or you've been hoping that the price is going to go down, you're going to want to pay attention because yes, things are definitely changing when it comes to the RTX 4090. I know there was some cause for concern a little bit ago when apparently it was going to be banned in China and then that turned out not to be true. So there was some maybe fear around that that didn't need to be happening. 
happening but this time guys it looks like things are different and yes the rtx 4090 for all we know could be entering its end of life as it looks like we're getting closer and closer to the rtx 40 super series and apparently the rtx 4090 has not been getting supplied to aibs for well quite a while and it's leading to higher and higher prices and there definitely is a fear that this thing could no longer become available now this information is coming from the website hardware times once again and if we take a look at their article what you're going to notice here is that apparently they're stating that some SKUs are starting at $1,700 up from their initial $1,600 and according to the leaker over on Twitter mega size GPU he had this to say about the situation quote it has been over three months since Nvidia barely shipped 8102 chips to AIC long before the restriction. It is still uncertain if the supply of 8102 for 4090 will be back to normal in the future. So again, guys, this is not looking good for the RTX 4090 that it continues to get more and more expensive and apparently nobody's been receiving them. That's going to be a bit of a problem. I can't necessarily sell milk if the milkman isn't coming by and milking me. I mean, and giving me milk. So that's obviously going to be, yeah, a pretty big issue. So if you've been thinking of buying an RTX 4090, you might be asking the question, should I buy now? Is it gonna be completely out of stock? And of course, that's something that I can't 100% for sure answer. I do wonder in the back of my mind, if the RTX 4090 is gonna go end of life, I could see them doing it as it could be getting replaced by the RTX 4090 Ti and the RTX 4080 Ti, but that doesn't necessarily mean you should be rushing out to buy the RTX 4090 because if they do truly end of life this card and it's not a temporary situation, well, honestly, the replacement cards coming out should actually be offering far better value. So if you're someone who's been waiting for an RTX 4090 to drop in price, then I don't think there's any harm waiting just a little bit longer as the RTX 40 Super Series is rumored to be launching probably by early next year. And this could also be including shortly after an RTX 4080 Ti and 4090 Ti. Once again, using the same GPU die, except for the 4090 Ti would be faster for probably either roughly the same money if it replaces it, or maybe just a little bit more expensive. And then the RTX 4080 Ti should just be a little bit slower, but probably significantly cheaper. We're probably talking around $1,200, a $400 price drop from the RTX 4090. So yeah, there's a little bit of concern that the 4090 might not be around, but maybe that's not such a bad thing and honestly I wouldn't be too sad whatsoever if we had those two options as a great alternative. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think the RTX 4090 is gonna go end of life or do you think that they're gonna keep it around and bring out an even more expensive RTX 4090 Ti? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia release new GPUs. Also, if you wanna see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.